genuinely confused only because I've been seeing a lot of posts, people saying the same thing. I'm voting blue to keep women's rights and my reproductive rights and the rights to my own body. And that's valid. Okay. Absolutely. We should have rights to our own bodies. A hundred percent as a woman. I agree. What I don't understand is why people think voting for Trump will not give them that. The only thing he did was take it out of the hands of the U.S. government and put it per state, which is drum roll, please. What 60% of the people in each state, all 50, voted for in their midterm elections. You guys think that there's only one election every four years, and that is just not true. OK, there are multiple elections each year. There are different seasons of elections and most of them are per state. So not only did you not show up for those elections, but then you want to complain that the people that were in your state, they voted for it to be per state and now they're per state. And now you all want to be mad. Regardless, no matter who goes into office these next four years, it will not overturn the overturning of Roe v. Wade because it is not a constitutional matter. It does not matter who goes into office. Kamala can't change it and Donald can't change it. Actually, let's even take a step further that there are multiple videos of Trump talking about his policies that if he were to put a bill into the US Senate to overturn the overturning of Roe v. Wade, if he could do anything per state, it would be that after the six week mark of pregnancy, if the pregnancy came from rape, incest, or it is a health risk to the mother that you have every right to go get an abortion. He does not want to ban it. Partial birth abortion, the eliminating of, of abortion in the third trimester big issue in Washington. Would President Trump ban partial birth abortion? Well, look, I'm, I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. And again, I will reiterate, for those who do not do their research, besides on TikTok, the only reason it is per state right now is because the people voted for it. I think people forget that there are not only four branches of government, but seven brackets. There are multiple legislations as well as multiple different sub governments in each state. Trump will not bring down your rights if he becomes president because he does not have the power to. He does not have the power to. Whenever women's rights were taken away or given, it was never the president's job to do that. They did not have the power to do that. So whether this new president is Trump or Kamala, that can't happen unless the people and the branches vote on it, which will never happen because there's a five to four Republican versus Democrat. It's almost equal in the executive government. I need you guys to understand that the research you do by Googling what the news stations have been writing and what people have been saying on TikTok, that's not research. There are public government documentation records that you can research if you'd like to, but you have to know where to look. It cannot be a biased article. It cannot be a lawyer on TikTok that has a million followers, so they must be credible. Do real research. Not one person that's running for president right now is trying to take your rights away as a woman. Not one. And further, they don't have the power to. They cannot unless it is voted upon per state, which will not happen because it already happened in 2022. If you have a problem with the decision, go talk to your parents who are the ones to go and vote on it. But you weren't there. So now you can't complain. <laughs> I also see astonishing TikToks of people of the LGBTQ community talking about how um, if Trump wins, then same sex marriage won't be legal and he hates gay people and he hates all of them and he never wants them to have rights. Yeah, since the 90s, he's been trying to pass same sex marriage. You can look it up. He's in his mid 20s and early 30s talking about being pro LGBTQ and trying to pass same sex marriage. Actually, you know who there's a video of from 1995 talking about not passing same sex marriage? Who was that who literally said uh, that that will never be lawful and he doesn't agree with it? Who was that? Oh, right, it was Joe Biden. And you don't believe me? I'll put them here. So yesterday and tomorrow in the Rose Garden to talk about a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. You know, think about this. The world's going to Hades in a handbasket. We are desperately concerned about the circumstance relating to uh, avian flu. We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have enough police officers. And we're going to debate the next three weeks, I'm told, gay marriage, a flag amendment, and God only knows what else. I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law. 
the Defense of Marriage Act. We've all voted, not or I voted, and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. What's the game going on here? And the president... How about gays serving in the military? It would not uh, disturb me. Again, I'd want to talk to lots of experts within the military, but it's not something that would disturb me. I mean, hey, I lived in New York City and Manhattan all my life, okay? So, you know, my views are a little bit different than if I lived in Iowa, perhaps. But it's not something that would disturb me. It's something I haven't given lots of thought. Oh, and if you want to talk about women's rights with Kamala Harris, let's not forget that when she was a prosecutor in California all through the 2000s, uh, she tried to have a law passed that put women, mothers, in prison when their child missed school. And there was a woman, actually, that came forward back then, not now for the election, back then in the early 2000s. You can look her up. Uh, she came forward that her daughter was in the hospital for an autoimmune disease, and she put that mother in jail. The woman in the interview states Kamala Harris passed this temporary bill and it didn't go through in the whole state of California. And that's why it never settled, um, because the rest of the government in California did not agree with it. But mothers were put in prison when their child missed school, even with medical notes from doctors in the hospital. I thought the mother of that child that was in the hospital was a woman. No. Right. I was just trying to math. You know what I mean? The other crazy thing is, is the fact that Kamala Harris has gotten less than 1% of the vote for the last 20 years on every ballot she's ever been on. Less than 1%. Less than one singular percent. Less than that. She has never been voted in. Ever. And all of a sudden she's got 50% of America's votes? That's not possible. She was put in. She was not voted in. And everything I have said in this video, including what I just said about being less than 1% of the votes for the last 20 years, I think around 22 to 23 years, you can look it up. You can look it up. It's sick. I don't care who you vote for because either way, what's going to happen is what's going to happen. It's not up to me. It's Quite frankly, not up to the one person watching this. It's not up to anyone besides the government. However, do your research, real research, before you vote. Go back in time. Find your history on these people. Find history on the candidates, their co-candidates, who their vices were, who their brackets were, who they voted in, who they removed, what policies they passed. Not Project 2025. Yeah, because the authors of Project 2025 came forward and said that Trump had nothing to do with writing those policies. That is what a Republican side wished for. Okay? Do your research. Do your research. Real government official unbiased research before you go and vote this year. No one is taking your rights away. Stop crying that out to the rooftops. No one's doing it. Not one person, maybe an asshole or two in the legislative branches, but other than that, no one else. All right. I'm glad we had this talk.